Now that you know a little bit of vocabulary about circles and quite a bit about tangents, we're going to talk about chords. So first off, I want to refresh your memory that a chord is a segment with endpoints on a circle. And it divides the circle into two arcs. Now, um, if you have a chord who's, that's not the diameter, it's going to divide it into a minor arc and a major arc. But remember that a diameter is also a chord, and it would divide a circle into two semicircles. Okay, now there's some properties, I think there's three or four of these, that you need to write down and you need to memorize because we're going to use those properties to solve problems. The first one says, in the same circle or in congruent circles, and that's very important that it's either the same circle or congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their chords are congruent. So in this diagram, arc AB is congruent to arc CD if and only if chord AB is, con is equal to chord CD, or they're congruent. Alrighty, and we'll talk a minute, or we'll talk a little bit later about how we're going to use this. Another property is if a diameter, and remember a diameter is a chord, if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, to another chord in the circle, then the diameter bisects the chord. And bisects means cuts it into two equal pieces. It also bisects the arc, which means cuts it into two equal arcs. Okay? That's the converse of this is that if you have one chord of a circle that is perpendicular bisector of another chord, then your first chord is a diameter. All right, in the last, so in this particular, sorry, in this particular circle, uh, I know that SQ is a perpendicular bisector of chord TR, therefore I can conclusively say that SQ is a diameter. Okay, now the last one is in the same circle or congruent circles, again, that's very important, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant. That means the same distance from the center of the circle. So if you look at our little diagram here, um, chord AB is congruent to chord CD if and only if it is the same distance from the center. So EF must equal EG. Okay, well let's use some of these things now. In this diagram, circle P is congruent to circle Q. So we have two congruent circles, which is one of the things that we need to use some of these with. And I know that chord GF is congruent to chord JK, and that the measure of arc JK is 80 degrees. So I want you to find the measure of arc GF. Well, since they're congruent and they're incongruent, uh, um, since the, their chords are congruent and they're in congruent circles, GF has to be A degrees as well. Okay, now let's take a look at this circle. Um, they want you to find the uh, length of chord HK. Well, as you can see, uh, diameter JL, and that is a diameter because it goes through the center, is perpendicular to chord HK. Well, we know if it's perpendicular, then it's a bisector. It cuts HK into two equal pieces. So it also cuts the arcs, uh, minor arc HK into two equal arcs. So since uh, KN is 7, HM has to be, or I mean HN has to be 7, so HK has to be 14, 7 plus 7. And now look at the arc, since the two arcs are cut into two equal pieces, or since the arc is cut into two equal arcs, um, I can set them equal to each other. I can say 11X equals 70 plus X. And I can solve that, and I can find out that X is 7. And then I'm going to place that 7 back into each one of those expressions, 
add them together and I can say that the measure of arc HK is 154 degrees. Okay, so take a look at that. Make sure you understand everything that I did. Go back and relook at it if you need to. All right. Now, in this diagram, arc, not arc, excuse me, chord QR is congruent or equal to chord ST, and they both are 16 units long. Uh, chord CU, oh, it's not a chord, just line segment CU, is 2x and line segment CV is 5x minus 9 and they want you to find the radius of the circle so they've kind of drawn this radius in here with a green line so they want you to find the radius well I can see that uh, QUC is a right triangle so if I can find the side two sides of that right triangle I can solve for the radius and I can do that easily because the first thing that I know is that line segment CV, which is 5x minus 9, is equal to line segment CU. Because since the chords QR and ST are congruent, they have to be at the same distance from the center. So I'm going to write an expression 5x minus 9 equals 2x, and I'm going to solve that and get that x equals 3. Then I also know that chord QR is bisected by diameter WX, and so uh, it bisects it, so QU has to be half of 16, and that makes it 8. So now I'm going to write these on my little diagram. I know that QU is 8. I know that CU is 6 because 3 times 2 is 6. And now I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And I'm going to say 8 squared plus 6 squared equals R squared. I solve that. I get 100 equals R squared, but I don't want R squared. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And I'm going to get that my radius is a 10 units long. Okay, those are the kind of things that you're going to be doing in your homework. And um, I think you're ready.